Flag fact. You can technically make the flag of the Netherlands as tall or as wide as you would prefer, since the flag legally has no official proportions by law. Hot take, but I feel like we should kind of do this for every flag, or at least the tricolor flags. I mean, proportions are kind of important for the US flag, that's for sure, and especially the flag of Nepal. Imagine trying to stretch this thing out. Quite possibly the oddest flag combination of all time. Scotland, Egypt, the Buffalo Bills, and Palestine. <laughs> I don't even have any words for this. Is there anyone that can think of any sort of logical explanation for this? I, I don't think there is. Maybe this is just supposed to represent every place that this person has visited, these countries and this random football stadium. Countries that already have flags, which are way better than their actual flags. Or at least they're more exciting and more recognizable. So here's the official Luxembourg flag, which is kind of boring and too much like the Netherlands. But here's another version that they use, which is unique and has an awesome lion on it. I don't think the Luxembourg flag is too bad. I mean, not many places use this light blue, so I think it's all right. There's Monaco, which is boring as frick, virtually the same as Indonesia and reverse Poland, but then they have this unofficial variant, which is super unique and almost like one of those optical illusions. I do agree. I love these patterns. Kind of gives me some Bavarian flag vibes, which I think is cool. Same with like Maryland. So yeah, I agree. They should switch it up. Then there's Portugal. I'm very surprised to see Portugal on this list. Already a really cool flag. All right, instantly recognizable, but the military variants. This one's beauty, isn't it? Uh, I guess so. I don't really have an opinion about this one. There's Haiti, which looks, yeah, like they couldn't find a PNG transparent image for the logo in the middle. But they used to have this Kingdom of Haiti between 1811 and 1814. I do really like the black right here. I think it's pretty all right. Man, yeah, don't get me started with New Zealand and Australia. I'm surprised that Australia isn't located on this. Any place that has still the British watermark has got to update those flags. So yeah, this one's all right. But I know it's only a matter of time before these Oceania countries probably updated eventually. Now here would have been a cool reason for Portugal to keep their current flag design. These are some creative flags of the overseas provinces that Portugal used to control. I really wish they were smart enough to actually have done this back in the day, but I think they had a lot of other things in mind, like just like conquering as much of the world as humanly possible. But keeping this like sort of yellow whatever that is banned and then throwing different iconic symbols would have been a fun little thing to do. The state of Wyoming does not have the same flag proportions as the state borders themselves. Now that would be absolutely genius. And honestly, a really easy change to fix, right? Just get like the state legislator to vote on this. It'd take like 30 minutes. Who wouldn't want this, honestly? Like just do it for the memes, guys. It makes so much sense. However, something we do need to keep in mind is that this is not actually a perfect rectangle. Again, we don't live on a flat earth, at least last time I checked. So the northern border are actually 20 miles shorter than the southern borders. Not only that, but there are secret edges to Wyoming. It's very hard to tell, and I'm being pretty nitpicky, so we could probably ignore this for, like, just the funness of a perfectly flag-shaped map proportions. Am I saying that right? But there are a couple regions that if you zoom in on, the borders move 800 meters south, and I can't even really tell why. Is there some sort of geographical feature that's responsible for this? Oh, here they move one whole kilometer south. There's also many more smaller deviations ranging from 10 meters to 150 meters on all four sides. Again, who cares? Like, just, you know, do it for the memes. AI-generated flags of Asia. We saw a lot of the US and Europe. It's always funny to see what the artificial intelligence comes up with. I love Georgia. That's a perfect state Georgia flag. Iraq, which is weirdly kind of US-y, United States-esque, that makes sense. The AI has officially labeled all of Cyprus as, um, Turkey or something. It is also supporting Assad in Syria, clearly. I mean, yeah, Turkey, you might as well. You might as well. Loving the pride here, India. Gotta represent. <laughs> Bhutan will keep up with the orange flag, though. I like the orange. Is that supposed to be Putin on this flag, or... I don't know. Wait, wait, I love this different Kazakhstan flag, just the red and yellow. Both colors are cool. You could always, like, bust out the red when you're, like, at war. There are so many jokes I could make about this Toyota Afghanistan flag, but I'm just going to avoid that. Cambodia, which is an offshoot of China, like a democratic China. Okay, I know a lot of people aren't going to agree with this, but Malaysia, that's not bad. I don't despise that, surprisingly. Vietnam flag just becomes a Vietnam veteran flag. Once strangers forever brothers. Is this marks on the Singapore flag? They got the Philippines perfect. Again, Mongolia, you might as well censor. Okay, I, I do feel like... No, North Korea. 
the the AI is definitely messing with us. Just like last time, I have a weird feeling the AI is just out here shit posting. The AI works by taking prompts such as the design of Taiwan's flag is and filling in the rest. I guess this explains some of these more unique um, decisions here. The evolution of French flags. So it all just started off as a basic blue banner of France between the 10th and 12th century. Then they introduced this symbol, which is still iconic today. I like they just went with the three instead, though. The royal banner of France was introduced in 1365, and they had that for a while. But they also had this one at the same time for the Kingdom of France. A few cut-off heads later, and all of a sudden, the French Republic is born. Strange they went with red, white, blue instead of blue, white, red. That's really creepy that they decided to switch that. And they had a little identity crisis between 1814 to 1830. What the hell is this? They had this for a year, so they tried all the combinations. So interestingly, they've always gone with the navy blue, at least as of the last several centuries. It was actually in 1976 they used this really light blue, which now comparing it to all these other things kind of is ugly. I see it, it was like a throwback, I, I feel, to like the banner of France. But I really prefer like this new version, the French Fifth Republic, which Macron, I guess, just basically updated. But I guess a lot of this stuff is still up for debate. There wasn't exactly an exact tone of color that they had clearly defined ever. This monstrosity was used for a total of 10 days though, so that makes me feel better. The flag of the central powers in this random World War One mobile game. So this is Kaiser Wilhelm II, and if we zoom in, we can see, yep, that is clearly the faction flag of the central powers. Makes sense to me. First of all, did the central powers even have a flag? Yeah, no. I feel like they had way bigger problems than coming up with some random flag design before they all get obliterated. I'm always so surprised when I see the world map during World War One. It's just so one-sided. You know, weirdly, I can understand why they would use the no-no American flag if, for instance, they were trying to represent World War II Germany, because you're not allowed to show the no-no German flag. You are, for some reason, still allowed to kind of show the no-no American flag. So I don't know, like, I could just get the reference, I, I guess, but in this case, case, no. Dominating flag layouts, or world flags divided by their templates, I guess? 53% of all of world flags are dominated by these most popular five designs. So most people go with the horizontal tricolor, but of course we know this is also a pretty popular one as well. I wonder if these have names. I'm sure there are official names, but I'll forget, so what's the point of looking them up? I didn't realize how many flags have like the stripes going diagonal across it, and then there's just the hot dog way, just sandwich style. What am I even saying? You know, like folding it in half. Most common shape used in the flags themselves, usually it's rectangles, but there are also 14 circles, 22 angles, 46 triangles. There's a lot of irregular polygons when you think about it, 79? And then of course, stars, crosses, suns, and crescents. Here someone made a perfect game of flag Tetris. Imagine all the flags elements split into separate parts, sorted by colors, and stacked like a Tetris game. See if you can find some national symbols somewhere in there. Well, I see a lot of the moons and stars. I think I've spotted Croatia. You were kind of really lenient with some of this stuff with the spaces and things. I see Lebanon's tree. I'm pretty sure this is kind of cheating in some areas, but whatever. And the most dominant colors in each continent. Oceania is obviously going to use a lot of blue. That's kind of a pretty big factor to all of these countries here. Whereas Africa, on the other hand, uses a lot of green. Well, they use a lot of all the colors, but Africa is a really massive continent. Seems like Europe and Asia really love their red. Europe likes blue a lot more than Asia, though. I always see this stuff and I'm like, we need more orange. Where are my orange flags at? We ain't got no orange in North America. Or South America for that matter. I will always simp for orange flags. So there's this trend of people going around their neighborhood and logging every flag that they see. So this person took a little walk around South London. Of course, he ran into 11 Union Jacks, 8 English flags. But then things start to get interesting. What is this? Liberation Tigers? What? Four of those things? Oh, it's a proposed independent state in Sri Lanka. This is the first time I've heard about this. Four Jamaican flags as well. So you can really see like the population kind of in South London. Two Colombian, two Polish. There are less Welsh flags than these other ones. Like there are still a few pirates still around. And then there's obviously a lot of miscellaneous flags like we are open and have a nice day matey. I feel like this would be significantly less interesting in the US. There's not a huge flag culture out here, but this person found nine US flags, two don't tread on me flags, two decorative flags just I don't think it was probably this. I'm going to assume it was not. 
I really hope not. One dark American flag, and then yeah, there's gonna be a lot of sports flags. So this person's gotta be somewhere, I don't even know, I was gonna say the West Coast because of Seattle and San Francisco, but I'm not sure. It is really fun to try to figure out where these people are walking around in. This is the flags this person sees on their daily commute, so obviously this person's probably in Italy, and it seems like wherever they are in Italy, they are big fans of the European Union. Just as many Italian flags as there are EU flags. Oh, so specifically, maybe they were in Sardinia? Oh, there we go, we can find out exactly where this person was. So this Italian island is a really big fan of the EU, apparently. We've got some Red Cross flags, or inverted Switzerland flag. Of course, the sports flag, we're never gonna escape those. Ooh, some Nordic representation. Wow, all of them? At least the Scandinavian ones. No Finland, though. Malta's pretty close to Sardinia, so I get that. And then a trade union, weirdly. I didn't realize trade unions have flags. The flag that pops up for Northern Ireland when you Google it. That is a strange one. I don't even know. What is the Northern Irish flag? It's not that. Yeah, I was gonna say, so it just doesn't have the watermark. Everything else is cool, I guess. Why did they put that there, though? Is this just to remind all of Ireland that this is, uh... British territory. The Bosnian flag from 1992 to 1998. I think this man could be holding literally any flag and it would look glorious. This is, I think, a pretty unique and cool design, regardless of just the epicness of the picture itself. But I could probably Photoshop one of those horrible US city flags on this and it would still look just as epic. I guess we talked about it already, but yeah, if Australia does want to remove one watermark for another, that'd be cool too. This clearly seems like a protest. Oh, this is probably not um, a good thing for the US. Is is it? Is this? I feel like I don't know what this is trying to say. Here's another one. Flags I saw on my neighborhood morning walk. Clearly, this person has got to be from like Oregon or Washington, right? A Philly pride flag? That's the Philly pride flag? I didn't know that was the name of that. Two progress pride flags. Dallas football, Alabama Crimson Tide, Buffalo Bills. Man, the sports are all over the place. Seattle Seahawks. Only Four U.S. flags, almost as many Cascadia flags, a Sierra Leone flag. That is the most hilarious thing. Just the context, like, you know, you know this person. Probably has flag dyslexia like me. I mean, I, I don't want to make fun of this person because I probably would also make the same mistake, but... And then a nice Christmas flag. That's great. Sorry, that's not Sierra Leone. That is the Ivory Coast, my bad. See, look, I'm making mistakes already. Now, this seems like a fun video idea I could do. Drawing every country's flag from memory. It was on day 45 of Slovakia. Yeah, that's pretty good. Some of those more intricate designs would be very difficult. Portugal and Spain. Oh, I don't want to even think about that. I'd actually be pretty embarrassed because there are a lot of flags that I, I really can't even think of from memory. Like a lot of Central America, and those small island flags. Oh. Flags of countries in the style of Montenegro. So you kind of need some sort of icon to be similar to Montenegro. I feel like this would make a pretty good YouTube thumbnail. You know how like they'd be putting the borders around YouTube thumbnails now? I do that sometimes just to fit in. But yes, yeah, Spain looks good. Good. Austria looks good. I like the China one. Weird to see that you didn't just go with a giant star for Vietnam. Basically, it, all these flags in the style of Montenegro just have a border around them. No stripes, like one border and a solid color in the background. It is a cool design for a flag, I will say. It's different. Argentina looks a little basic. I wish there was like some stripes there, but I guess I never really appreciated this country's flag. Here we go, the most Chad U.S. state flag explained. Maryland first adopted it in 1904. One of only four U.S. state flags that does not contain blue. I love it. So this Calvert is the coat of arms of the Calvert family, first Lord of Baltimore, for successfully storming a fortification during battle. And and then the Crossland, this is the coat of arms of the First Lord of Baltimore's mother's family. Oh, so that's why this is so cool. This is old school. I mean, like, they're using old school techniques here. This was famously used during the American Civil War, the Crossland banner. Well, there you go. If only we all had cool things like this going on. Here's a look at former British colonies that now have their independence and what they did with the design of their flag. So starting off, we have the retained the monarchy but ditched the ensign. So they no longer have the British watermark, basically, in the corner. Canada. Jamaica and more, just name a few. Then there's the ones that retained the monarchy and also retained the watermark. We were just talking about that, Australia, New Zealand. Strangely, there's the ones that retained the old flag in the corner, but ditched the monarchy. That's odd. So they probably just haven't got around to updating it yet. Fiji, what are you doing, guys? Come on now. And then finally, there are all of these countries that just completely ditched both, which makes sense. I, I, this is confusing. These guys are a little confusing. Well, I think it's fine to retain the monarchy, but, you know, come up with your own flag. None of these even come close, though, to the Hawaiian flag, who no longer have anything to do with the British. They are literally a U.S. state 
but for some reason, I just, I don't know. People don't care about flags enough, that's what I think. And big thanks to the Christmas patrons, Aryan After Hours, Drew's Arab Sugar Daddy, what are you doing, Step Drew? Why am I doing this? This is Gabe, Stormtrooper 501, the pie. Mine Brothers 999 Nemo X2, Majestic Cooper, Unicorn, Lover, Ivan Lima, I love Marks, Drew's Argentinian Grandpa, Dalton D, Cybernetic Ghost of Christmas Bring Past Bring Back Poland, Barnsky W, and for His Excellency, King Corey.